Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about tips for a first timer. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, do you have some tips for me? I'm starting my first job as a JavaScript developer. So the short answer is brace yourself, shit's coming your way. Uh, most likely and finally make sure focus on understanding the entropy that you're going to deal with so <clears throat> Now I'm not going to be uh, Try to be a negative Nancy or anything like this I'm just going to try to tell you something that is usually very true and that is that No code rots as quickly as JavaScript code. If you are working on a full stack, say JavaScript project or a front end code base or something like that, odds are that the code will be in an absolute mess. It's going to be very, very ugly in many, many ways because I'm very sorry to tell you this, but very few developers respect JavaScript and JavaScript development enough to do it well. Everybody thinks that it's super easy and everybody treats it as this toy type of thing that you don't really have to care so much about, when the reality is that it, this is, it's actually very tricky and JavaScript is very unforgiving when it comes to people who, don't, who want to build something serious but don't actually have the knowledge of, as to, uh, of how to do so. So it's kind of the reverse. People treat it as, e to, that it's, they treat it as if it's very easy to do this, when the reality is that it's actually the reverse. It's actually very, very hard to do it. It's almost uh, the uh, complete, complete opposite of how people treat C and C++, where you kind of know that you really, you really need to know your stuff there in order to avoid memory leaks and dangling pointers and all of this good stuff, right? And for you as a first timer, odds are that you are getting hired because nobody else wants to work with the front end code or the front end code has gotten to a point where they feel like they need someone to take care of this because either people don't want to deal with it or people are more back end oriented and they feel like they want someone to kind of do that full time and so forth. So in many, many times a junior front end developer is hired to do cleanup or because people already know that this is <clears throat> going to get so complicated that they need someone who is dedicated to it. It's not, it's actually funny because it's not that often I see people opting for a senior front end developer first. They usually reach for a junior and hopefully that's going to solve it. But the tips that I can give you is that you kind of just have to embrace that. Odds are that you're going to find a lot of legacy. So you are going to have to ask a lot of questions. Now, the hard part of this about this, depending on situation, I mean, maybe you are in a company that is a bit of, a, in my opinion, at least a unicorn company that just has experienced other front end develop experienced front end developers who can answer all your questions and stuff like that. If you're really lucky, that is the case that you're simply joining a really expert team in front end. Odds are that that's not what's going to happen because even the people that call themselves mid level and senior front end developers are, in my opinion, not usually. Um, they, they're, they're farther away from that title than they would like to admit. But if you have such people, ask a lot of questions because odds are that how all of this mess works is just going to exist in the heads of the people around you because of the simple reason as to why front end code falls to shit so quickly. And that is that there is no usually no structure. There is no community around quality and architecture and thinking things through and so forth. Usually everything in front end is about getting it to work, number one. Number two is developer experience, which is usually, the, it's just a byword for dependencies and libraries. That's usually how it works. And all of, I have many, many videos about that, that you, if you're interested that you can have a look at where I kind of explain what the impact is of having so many dependencies. But 
that's the number one thing to just ask a lot of questions and make sure that you're talking to people as much as possible just try to figure out who in the company knows something some people are going to know more and some people are going to know absolutely nothing about the front end code and you need to figure out which people know about what area of the code and some parts of this system or this code is very likely going to be in the category of nobody really knows because the person who did this isn't here anymore or they don't remember or something like that. Now, once that is done, when you have like kind of embraced that, so like creating good social connections is a very important thing because you are going to depend on other people quite a lot in the beginning of things, especially like I would say for the first year, you're definitely going to feel like you don't know anything about anything and you need to really make sure that people are open to answering your questions and so forth. So being sociable is, is key here. The second thing I think that you should do is that you should have a look at the package JSON file, which is most likely in the project with all your dependencies. And you should start to walk through the dependencies, especially the big ones. Try to figure out what bundling system are you using? Are you using Express or Happy or some other server side solution? Is it just a front end project? What frameworks are you using? What external what extra libraries are you using? Are you using some type of build, like a build system like Gulp, like a task manager such as Gulp or Grunt or something like that? And just try to figure out what the different dependencies are as a list. And then start introducing yourself. Practice, learn these things. Don't try to like change things and so forth and don't try to remove things unless you're, a, you're really sure that this is safe to remove. Just try to understand it all. Focus on that. Just use this mess as your odyssey. Use it to, to learn something about this industry, like the, to, to learn about front-end development. Just use it as a platform of materials for you to study and get good at. Because the danger about going into the mindset that, yeah, I'm just going to clean all this up, I'm just going to make it nice, is that you're going to pull on a string, which is you trying to move something. And then you're going to realize that, shit, that was attached to three, four, five, six other things. And now you're in a real mess or you need to just revert everything you just did and just undo everything. So to st starting out as a fresh JavaScript developer is usually more about just trying to understand all the different tools and all the different libraries so that when you get to a point where you feel like, yeah, I kind of know how all of these strings are attached. When you get to that point, then you can start improving things and then you can start making things better. But don't go into the mindset, which is usually what developers do, like especially like especially the junior developers who f might feel that they have something to prove. They go into improvement mode. They go and mock the code and say this is shit and we should improve it. And everybody at the company knows that it's shit. That's why you're there, right? Well, most likely. So instead of doing that, try to really get your bearings first before you start suggesting all of these improvements. So what I want you to take away from this is that the two biggest tips that I can give to a first time JavaScript developer is number one, create strong social connections in your place of work because you are going to depend on quite a lot of knowledge that a lot of different people might have because odds are that the code base is in such a sorry state that it's going to be very tricky for you to reverse engineer and figure out everything on your own. So create those social connections so that you can get answers to your questions. The second thing is focus more on trying to understand the tools than trying to change them or improve them and stuff like that. Everybody knows it's shit, but before you can, before you should dare trying to make everything just nicer, try to understand it. Try to really understand all of the dependencies and how they all in interact with each other and ask questions. Because once you get a full picture of the state of the code and why all of these tools are there, some of them are going to be there because we forgot to remove them and some of them are gonna be there because there's this really old shitty feature nobody cares about, but it unfortunately depends on the code looking the way it does and with these dependencies, you can't really just remove it. And if you don't know that, you might just find yourself in a situation where you're trying to make everything nice and it just keeps on failing over and over. Or you might even get to a, a worse situation or cause a lot of regressions and bugs because you went in without enough information. So think about that. Have a great day.